ain't no destination, man. The journey is everything. Yeah. Hey guys, Patrick here. Welcome to the Grow Dude Show. This is episode number four, and this episode I actually taped a process I was doing over the weekend where I was washing clones. So this video is going to be about how to deal with insects um, once you have a very voracious or you know uh, a type of an infestation that you're having a hard time controlling. First piece of advice I've learned is anytime you do have any sign of any insect, you know, take it seriously and do something about it. But probably even before that, make sure you have some sort of a weekly or bi-weekly every two weeks regimen of spraying that helps you prevent or maintain. Um, the product that I'm reviewing today and that I've been working with is Lost Coast, Lost Coast Plant Therapy. This is a insecticide, fungicide, miticide, and you can also use it as a soil drench. So for this episode, I'm dealing with some root aphid uh, root aphids and some of their little flyers that I'm catching on my yellow tape. So make sure you have yellow tape out. I would recommend a product like this, spraying your, your plants on a weekly basis, even if you don't have any insects. It helps prevent a lot of the problems because it makes your plant an inhospitable place for insects in general for both to live and procreate and recreate. So you want to take advantage of that and get ahead of these problems as well as you know, um, if you're fully organic and you're using living soil, you know, there's some more advanced techniques with IPM where you can use uh, beneficial insects that works really well. But you have to be really good at trying to figure out what insect you're dealing with. In my case, again, being, uh, you know, I've grown about 10 plus years ago for quite a while and then I didn't grow for a long period of time. So I have a basic knowledge, I'd consider it basic to medium. But as far as insects, insects go, I'd say again, very basic. So in my mind, I kind of thought that I had fungus gnats. Um, at first I was fruit flies, then I read a little bit more, then I was positive it was fungus gnats. So I kind of dealt with it that way, even got the insect or the mite that goes after those. It didn't really deal with it until one day I lifted up a DWC plant and I noticed um, the root aphid itself. And then at that point I was able to identify my problem better, find some products that work, um, this product isn't available in Canada yet. I actually go to the States and get it, but it should be available in the next month or so. I have spoken to the company. Um, so in this case, and in the video I'm going to show you, I'm taking plants. I'm lucky enough that these are uh, clones that I just dropped into some DWC, which is just some water and the roots are open and exposed. I have also done this with plants in, you know, pots or air pots. So you can take this stuff make it and run it right through your soil, let it sit and then, you know, feed them again in two or three days. In this case, in this video, I've taken the extreme caution of any clones entering my facility at this point of dunking the full clone, um, setting the roots and the root zone in some of the solution, letting it sit there for a while, usually about 10, 10 minutes, taking them out, washing the leaves, the stems, everything in the plant, again, soaking that a few times, then rinsing off the root zone with RO water and then returning it into a DWC. Um, in that case, I have some products like UC roots that also helps kill any kind of pathogens or uh, pests as well. But in that case, again, it's never 100%. Um, so you always have to stay on top of these things with yellow sticky insect tape. And that stuff's super important in order to identify and catch problems early. Um, unless you're inspecting your plants and under each leaf every single day, you will lose. So make sure you take these problems seriously and hopefully this video will help show you some of the ways you can go about dealing with it. But my biggest recommendation at this point for new growers is get yourself some sort of a product that you're happy with, that you can trust, that works and have a, a weekly spray regimen and at least you're creating an inhospitable environment 
for insects, which is probably the most important thing you want to do. Um, you're basically creating a, a feeding frenzy in bonanza. It's like opening up a buffet and saying you can't enter, but you have no doors or walls or anything set up to make it difficult. So that's basically what you want to do. So watch this video if you have any questions, comment down below. I'll hopefully see if I have to jump in at the end of this. Otherwise, see you on the next episode. I know a lot of people are gonna say this seems like overkill, but trust me. Root aphids are one of those things that if you don't catch and deal with right away, they'll infest your whole garden and will never go away. Very similar to spider mites. And this dunking method, submerging everything, is one of the methods that can best assure, also spraying them for seven days straight afterwards, and possibly another root ball soaking. In this case, because they're small enough, and uh, they're DWC so I can see the roots, it's actually easy to work with, so I think it's actually the best way uh, and example of showing this in general. Much easier than a five gallon, you know, pot of soil. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking the whole plant out. I've already removed the peat pellets. So at this point, all you're going to see is a pretty long root mass. original. I cut out the bottom of this when I put them in. So actually that's why this one as an example I can take straight out of this. It should be able to come out. Not the best thing to do with one hand. Actually there we go. I'm going to stop this. The full plant all the way down. Now that root cube is what I'm concerned the most about as well as the whole root mass. I scraped a bunch of uh, the peat pellets. So I'm going to start by dipping everything into a 30 mil solution. So as you can see, she's having a bath. And that's it. We're just letting her soak it up in there. Make sure everything gets covered up. And we're gonna rinse that nicely out in some fresh RO water before putting her back into her new home over here. And some fresh RO water in this new DWC air ch water chilled table we're going to get for these five plants for a medical patient. So again, you can keep them in this water. It is acidic, you don't pH it. It's not recommended to like leave them for too long. I've used this already on my soiled plants with no concern. So again, always do your stuff at half strength or quarter strength. Do small tests. Get to know the product. Get to know its reaction on your plants. You don't want to ruin anything. I start off by spraying this product. It has done nothing but good things for my plants. I've done this as a soil drench. This is the first time I'm using it as a full DWC root ball drench. Again, I only found two root aphid flyers, but I know how quickly this stuff starts. And at this point, I'm, I'm more than willing to kill these guys off if this is gets out of hand. But at this point, I also know this product is pretty fantastic and should also be able to save my guys here. Here's the product we're using, Lost Coast Plant Therapy. It'll be available in Canada shortly. It's available all over the US. Fantastic product, smells really great. Main ingredient is organic soybean oil and organic peppermint oil, some citric acid. And it smells great. So we're gonna leave that in for about 10 minutes and then we're going to rinse it out in some RO water but first we're going to actually dunk the whole plant and bathe the plant in some water as well. I have this netted pot here just to keep mixing the mixture around. That's another big part of it because it can separate. You can't just leave it in a container like this for you know 10 minutes or an hour and then come back to it and use it. It will actually float to the top and if you do that, you might get a concentrated amount on something. And you don't want that. That's where you probably will get 
your damage happening. So there you go. Something like this. Okay. Be right back. Gone ahead and sprayed them down as well. Just happened to be in a great position. Again, DWC, if you have the ability to pull them out by the roots, which is again rare because if they're properly put into netted pots, yeah, you can't do what the hell I'm doing right now. So again, I mess with my pots because uh, uh, I've been doing this stuff for a bit and this tends to work for new clones and they can kind of jump between the two. So bend them over like this while they're in the water here. Spray, 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 lift them up, spray, spray, spray. Literally drench, drench, drench while they're sitting here waiting. Figure they'll do that work. I'm still going to put them through this bath nonetheless. Give them a little dry time and then rinse out their roots really, really, really well vigorously. And then uh, I put their homes back in place here. And they're bubbling and ready to go. Okay. About 10 minutes. So everything's been drenched. Plants also been drenched already. Nonetheless, I'm gonna soak her up all the way. Never ever done this to a plant before. Now I understand how alive the plant is, and if a plant is healthy, how safe that this actually is an option is to do and possible to do, so the way it's going down all the leaves, all the stems. Now I'm just going to put it back over here. This just seems to be a good spot for it to dry a little bit. Bring out its friend. Let them join, or have her join the party. Sorry. There we go. There we are. The other one done. I can soak off a little bit, dry off, and then I can do the root cleaning with some RO water. That way I don't have this stuff spilling down into the RO water and contaminating it. I'll let it spill down here a little bit and let these guys drip off a little bit first. Okay, as you can see, the outside is nicely, at least not foaming. Like this bottom part is. And that's what we want to rinse off. So I'm going to shake off a little bit if I can. Do not want to introduce too much of this into my RO bucket if I can. There we go. It's one for your new bath. Let's see if we can get her to sit down and float. I doubt it. There we go. So I'm just going to vigorously up and down, try to not make you guys all motion sick. I'll be right back. Okay, just pulled her out. I'm going to bring her over here to our new home and then add some new clay pellets. So here we go. She's back in her home, our new home. Added some clay pellets, standing up nice and straight. See down below. and bubbles, roots and bubbles. So in this case, I can't get this one out because it's obviously not cut out. The roots are growing right through the pot, which is the normal way. So I was able to take the clay pellets out, and I'm going to take this whole pot and the roots and dunk this into the water and leave that and let that soak for a bit and go through the same process with this one. So just to show you the difference between, you know, the last process, which I think was a little bit non-average is probably the right way to say it, do, say it because most people don't customize their pots and cut them. Uh, this would be the only other normal way you could do it. Um, again, you can also go to those full bucket pots, fill it up here and just dunk them in there as much as you can and then run uh, more solution through the top. That's what we got. Two down. Three to go. Okay, they're all five back in their new home. Everything put back in.
that was the full dunking process and running the clone through so that they got fully soaked, the root cube got soaked, the roots got cleaned up, uh, all the leaves, all the stems, everything got touched um, and then rinsed off and put into their system. They're doing fine. This is the way I treat any new clones at this point. And then I continue to spray them once a day or every two days for the next seven to 10 days, depending on if I have any suspicion of them being, you know, having any kind of an infestation, it might be longer, but on average now I'm, I'm taking about 10 days, maybe 14, spraying them every two days and watching very carefully with my yellow tape to make sure there aren't any insects looking under the leaves, watching the plant for any signs. So take a look at that. Make sure you're watching out for your insects. You do not want to let this go and have a really big problem to deal with and have to destroy your medical cannabis and your medicine. I think that's another one thing that the licenses don't really address. And I've always kind of bring it to people's attention. If you think you need to grow 20 plants, try to get a license for 40 or 50. Um, the reality is, as a farmer in your own house, fighting all of these elements, you're going to have losses and you really do want to build in that ability to, to absorb a loss without having to go through a period of time, maybe even, you know, four months to six months with no medicine. So keep that in mind. Take insects super seriously. The best thing you can do is be cautious in advance so have a plan spray them on a regular basis so you don't have to deal with them in such a severe way like i've had to do this time or how i deal with clones that's why i enjoy seeds so much now i realize why so many farmers out there that i watch buy seeds and crack seeds open on a regular basis and it's just about timing when you're going to pop open your new seeds it seems to be around the exact same time that you're going to be harvesting a batch of your cannabis. So as something comes in uh, or as a new batch goes into your flower room, that's the time to start popping seeds because that gives you around the 45 to 60 days you need to have those seeds to get to a big enough point that you'd want to put them into the flower room next and uh, then watch and weed out any males. And again, take it into consideration if you're using seeds that a certain percentage will be male as well. So keep that in mind. So if you have, let's say you want 20 female plants, you may have to grow 30 from seed or 40 from seed to cull out the males to be left with the amount that you want in your flower room at the time. So two different ways to go about it. I see the values of them now. If you have any questions about insect management, I will be um, getting some ladybugs as well to help address my issue and as a way of showing you guys how this looks and what you can do with some of the beneficial insects out there and how they can help your grow as well and protect your grow and your garden. Have a great day, everyone, and see you on the next episode of The Grow Dude Show. Leads is multiplying, labels trying to figure out what? the secret I've been hiding. Okay, this money that I'm making, yeah, it's new to me. All these women getting naked, yeah, that's new to me. I'm the topic of conversation that's new to me. People ain't believe I always did. That's nothing new to me. Okay, this money that I'm making, yeah, it's new to me. All these women getting naked, yeah, that's new to me. I'm the topic of conversation that's new to me. People ain't believe I always did. That's nothing new to me.